This is Devin with Writing Daily. Another day about writing, another word, another paragraph, another page. That's how we finish our books, by keep on keeping on. And welcome. Uh, my name is Devin Galladay. I'm the editor-in-chief of In the No Traveler, and I am the author of the forthcoming book, 10,000 Miles from a Dead Father's Ashes. And today we are going to be discussing this fantastic book called The Old Man on the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. There's a reason for that because today's subject is about keeping it simple. Diane, Denny, Tammy, everybody welcome. Thank you for being here. And if you do like what I'm doing, please consider giving this a thumbs up or hit the wow button or something like that because that's what they tell you to do. Anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about keeping your writing simple and uh, we are going to be looking, and by the way, this is sort of like the fancy, this is like the supreme book nerd edition of books. Uh, it is done by uh, Folio Society that are outside of London, um, and they are the kings of, of nerd, super deluxe, expensive volumes of books. I am grateful to have them. I have a whole bunch of my series, uh, and so I will bring them up. But I wanted to read you the very second page, not the second page, the second paragraph of Old Man and the Sea so we can get to kind of what we were discussing. And let's see. Okay, so, you know, f most people know this story is about a fisherman. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of details. I mean, we can totally deconstruct this book, which is really fantastic. But I just want to read this, this paragraph to kind of illustrate the larger point that I'm making and discuss Hemingway just a little bit. Uh, all of this stuff des deserves much deeper insights, but we're just going to go into this little thing here. So the, the, the second paragraph is, The old man was thin and gaunt with deep wrinkles in the back of his neck. The brown blotches of the benevolent skin cancer the sun brings from its reflection on the tropic sea where were on his cheeks. The blotches ran well down the sides of his face and hands, pardon me, and his hands had the deep creased scars from handling heavy fish on the cords. But none of these scars were fresh. They were as old as erosions in the fishless desert. That is a great line. Uh, Diane, thank you for being here. Hopefully you can log on later because Hemingway is fantastic. And so what do we come away with? We have a picture of uh, an older man who is a fisherman who is showing the signs of age and probably from what he loves. And his hands show his experience as a fisherman but we also know that he is dealing with what is described as a fishless desert, which doesn't sound promising if you are somebody who loves fishing. So what does Hemingway do well here? Well, he does a million things well here, but I think probably the, the most important thing is he keeps it to a minimum. He gets right there. In other words, he's describing the things that are who this person is. I think we know everything that we kind of need to know about this fisherman, that he hasn't caught fish in a long time. And these two words, fishless de desert, kind of sum up what his experience is. And so we kind of already get a sense of who this character is, where they're going, and we might even know what the story is going to be about just from that single paragraph alone. What I think is really important here is that his word choice is very specific and he removes, really, there isn't any adjectives here. There aren't any adverbs here. Matter of fact, one of the things that he does, and these are all sort of like general things about what Hemingway does. And hey, Sandy, how are you? Um, I think uh, I think a belated birthday is in order. Uh, so what what Hemingway does here is he kind of removes all the things that we as writers tend to revel in. Like we want to get into adverbs and we want to get into adjectives in part because we want to lead the reader exactly we, where we want them to go. Hemingway doesn't really give us that uh, that choice as a reader, he kind of gives us a much more open-ended sense of the story. In other words, we know he's old, we know that he's weathered, we know that he's been on the sea, and now we know that he isn't getting what he needs as a fisherman, 
right, from the, from the fishless desert. So I think what he's doing here is really quite remarkable, and he sets the reader up to kind of take where whatever vagueness there is in in the in the writing itself, we as readers, and I think this is true across the board, part of what makes writing magical is that we get to fill in the spaces where there isn't stuff. In other words, we can take this paragraph and imagine in our own mind's eye one of a thousand different scenarios of what this character looks like in sort of like if we were to go into greater detail and greater description, we'd have a better sense of who this character is in the old man. And I think he does it wonderfully. But so so what's the what's the object here of when we keep it simple when we're talking about writing? Well, all it really kind of comes down to is that we need some nouns and we need some verbs, right? That means we need the old man and we need to know what he's doing. The other thing that that and I'm gonna save some of this stuff for later for later podcasts, but one of the things that Hemingway is known for is that he doesn't put in a lot of commas, like he avoids it like the plague. Uh, part of the reason why he takes that out is like, when we read a, a, a comma, I think what we sort of it naturally do, hey, Kevin, welcome. Uh, one of the things that we do is that we see a comma and then we stop. It's even though it's just a little momentary millisecond kind of stop, we still stop right? So Kem Hemingway, I think, consciously removed all the commas, not because they were grammatically correct or incorrect, but because what he does is he wants us to keep reading. He doesn't want our eye to stop at a punctuation to evaluate to punctuation mark. What he wants us to do is just keep reading on through, which allows the reader to kind of just turn more pages, to keep us in the flow of the action and of what's happening. And that's why he kind of keeps this down to the ideas of nouns and verbs. Does he scribe, describe the wrinkles? Yes, he does. He does do some description, but all of his descriptions aren't about being happily in a place or sadly in a place. In other words, there would be a lot of writers, I might even be one of them, who might say something to the effect of, uh, and Sandy, I hope to see you soon again, too. Um, there would be a lot of writers who might want to lean towards the idea of the sad fisherman didn't catch any fish. And that might be the way they might best to describe it. But what Hemingway does is he doesn't, he doesn't need to supply that information because as soon as we, we get to this idea of these are not fresh scars, we already have a sensibility of what's happening to this fisherman. And then he doubles down on that to describe the sea as a desert. And so we already know that this fisherman is down on his luck without having to say, oh, the poor down on his luck fisherman. I think what he does and what, or, or what a, lot, a lot of writers find it difficult to do, me included, is that I want you to know how sad the fisherman is. So let me tell you how sad the fisherman is. He's joyless and he's miserable. If he could only catch a fish. However, I think what we're doing is we're taking away the credibility of our readers, that our readers are smart enough to figure this out for themselves, who can already read between the lines on their own. Again, that's one of the joys of reading within itself. And I think it's an important fundamental that anytime we are talking, uh, you know, anytime we're telling a story that we can probably do, you know, a first draft or even a second draft where we're filled with all of these things that we want to help out the reader just in case they missed something, right? In this case, uh, I think perhaps by the third draft is the thing where you start looking for the sadly, the uh, this is a terrible thing for the, you know what I mean? All those kinds of things where we actually just lay out or through, through adjectives and adverbs, the happily and the sadly and those kinds of things. I don't think we necessarily need to do it. And because Hemingway is probably one of the most imitated writers, certainly in American culture, um, he certainly has, he shares with us that we don't necessarily need to go and do that. So um, anyway, that's what I've got for today. As always, please, please consider liking this page, uh, joining me over on iTunes, subscribe there. If you like what I'm doing, leave a review. That's something I was supposed to be asking months ago, but I can't stand this, this self-promotion nonsense. But we're working it out little by little. 
So anyway, as always, feel free to ask questions, like, uh, join me on iTunes, and definitely go to devingalladay.com forward slash dad to learn more about 10,000 Miles with My Dead Father's Ashes. As always, thank you so much for being with me, and I will see you again tomorrow for more writing daily because that's what we do to finish our writing projects. Anyway, thank you so much. Oh, wait, quick note from Kevin. Hey, Devin, uh, there is a movie of it starring, I think, Spencer Tracy. I think you are right. And that said, I lean towards prescribing the book. Anyway, thank you for your thumbs up. Thanks you for your courtesy. And we will talk to you guys all again real soon.